Now, please, uh, Larnar, if you have any doubt, please, anything you want to be advised, suggested, please uh, put your question, put forth your question, put forth your doubt, and we shall start our session. Sir. Block three. Oh, of course, uh, yesterday I was uh, Rakesh. Rakesh was uh, Rakesh, you are on the line. Uh, Rakesh, you are. You are uh, you had uh, some questions, some uh, doubts. Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. Yesterday you had put some. Namaste. You had asked me that uh, who were these five Brahmins? Name. Name of these five Brahmins who last received sermon from Lord Buddha. Yes. It was your question yesterday? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. So I I I, uh, I had to go through certain uh, literature. Then I also consulted certain sources. And then I came to know that there is a sutra called Dharma Pravartana Sutra. It is one of the it is a part of this Pitakas, Vinaya Pitaka, Sutta Pitaka, and Abhidhamma Pitaka. And uh, according to Buddhist tradition, in this sutra it has been mentioned. The names of these five Brahmins are uh, number one, Kundana. Number two, Asaji. Number three, Bhadiya. And number four, Bapa. And number four, five, Mahanama. These are the names of the five Brahmins which have been mentioned, which has been mentioned in the, of, uh, the Dharma Pravartana Sutra, uh, which is part of uh, the spiritual literature. And uh, second thing that you had asked me is because. Uh, Ajivika was a heterodox sect which was founded in the 5th century by one Makkali Gosala. And um, that name I was forgetting. It was also one of the uh, Samana movement that was going in the 5th, 6th century, 6th, 5th, 6th, uh, 5th century BC. And um, this uh, Ajivika movement was also one of the movement like, uh, like uh, the Buddhism and Jainism which also challenges this orthodox brahmanical uh, orthodox brahmanical religion vedic uh, literature vedic religion vedic culture vedic uh, way of life and uh, it also try to establish the uh, supremacy of uh, free will free will and the freedom of individual and that is the ajivika but ajivika like buddhism and jainism could not gain such, such popularity or a supreme order as a religious sect or as a um, reformative sect in the traditional Hindu religion as Buddhism and Jainism they could uh, gather that uh, popularity they could gather that popularity um, so in that way because they lost their importance by 14th century AD they continued for some time, but in some pockets of northern India, they of course penetrated into South India, but their popularity was not so high as compared to Buddhism and Jainism. Okay, so um, I think uh, Rakesh, you could understand uh, what are the points that you had raised yesterday. I tried to solve it. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now today's uh, lesson we shall uh, cover. Uh, urbanization, urbanism. Yesterday, uh, as per your request, I guess I had given you 10 precepts of urbanism, 10 precepts of urbanization as advocated by V. Golden Child. And I think you have also covered these things in your um, study material, which have been provided by IGNO uh, through email to you. Um, these things have been also enumerated in your study material in block number three, uh, block number three, and the unit, I think it is unit eight. Unit eight or nine, maybe whatever it may be. Um, in the chapter, urban classes, trader and artisan, you must have gone through this uh, particular topic. Uh, here, there also they have enumerated uh, ten precept, ten points accordingly, uh, which uh, are the detrimental uh, points, detrimental elements for deciding urban character of a region. Now, now. Uh, Coming to urbanization, traders and artists and extension of agricultural um, settlement, we have certain points that we will enumerate. First of all, I would like to invite some uh, doubts or some anything, you any questions 
you may put so that we can carry on with our discussion. Now it is your turn. Please. Sir, tell me about guilds. Guilds, huh? Guilds, yeah, okay. Why they guilds. are, yeah, why, what position they have in the society, why they are given so much importance, the rules, the functions. Please explain us about that. Okay. Guilds. Okay. Sadhanjali put forth a question that is on guilds. What is the function of the guild? What does what does it mean by guilt? What are what are the importance of guild in those time? And uh, that I will enumerate. This is first Sadhanjali. Then any other questions you want to ask anybody else? Anybody? Any questions? Say so, what is the relation of the first of all? I'm just uh, attending the question uh, put forth by Sadanjari. What is guild? Number one, as it has already been given in your study material, but I'm now fitting it. Guild is an association of persons. Sir, sir, voice is not coming. Unable, you are on our audio. Hello. Hello. Sir, 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 your, your voice is not. Sir. Is not audible. Yes, sir. Now it is audible. Yes, Can 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 you hear me now? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Now, what is guild? Sadanjali, Sadanjali has put forth the question: What is guild? What is the importance of guild, and how it was functioning? Now, my answer is: I am now taking up this particular topic. For discussion, what is guild? First of all, in very plain way, we can explain guild as an association of person, as an association of person belonging to same trade, same occupation, same crafts, same art. It, in a very plain way, systematically, if we we'll put forth guild as an as an association or corporation of the persons belonging or doing the same job. For example, guilds of leather workers, Charmokara, in ancient Pali language, Pali <coughs> sources or Sanskrit sources will give Charmokara. Then guilds of oilsmen, Toiliko. Guilds of bankers, traders, merchants guilds, Sarthabhao. Sarthabhav, these merchants who were going to trade with distance land, taking a law, taking a um, caravans, um, uh, taking merchandise in a um, shape of a caravan. Caravan means group of merchants going to uh, some distance place, place to trade and taking their merchandise in a row, and that is called caravan, and they are called Sarthabhav. So these were the guilds which were formed when a trade, when trade and commerce began to increase the volume of trade and commerce began to increase why this volume of trade and commerce began to increase because now come to this point urbanization it is the impact guild was a direct impact of urban way of life in a sense it is the output of urbanization why urbanization occurred I had already explained it yesterday that urbanization occurred because there was large scale, large scale trade and commerce because of the expansion of agriculture, because of the implementation of iron technology. Iron technology helped for agricultural surplus. That agricultural surplus could be channelized through trade and commerce. 
during this period from 6th century bc to 4th century bc in north india we may call it in indo gangetic plain this urban ah uh, mr sahu uh, dr sahu uh, thank you very much this urban features begin to arrange their heads and uh, it is because of the when aryans they settled in gangetic plain cleared the forest and began to uh, began to cultivate the large patches of land available to them filled with alluvial soil definitely there was surplus production and that surplus surplus production because of the iron technology because of the implementation and use of iron technology gave way to surplus sur accumulation of surplus and that was channelized through trade and commerce very simple so we may summarize it in a sense the time period is early historic fetch from 6th century bc to 4th century and this period witness number 1 is it audible this this period uh, witnessed number 1 increase in trade and expansion of agriculture number 2 uh we shall um, can i have a um, another page another page we should go to the next page uh then this is 3.1 i want uh, that uh, we should go to 8 unit 8 unit 8 dr sahu please uh, bring it to unit 8 this is unit 10 we have come to unit 10 unit 8 yes yes ha uh, now uh, this is the uh, this is the person that i want to see and to guide the my learners ha uh, you see this is here see introduction it is been it has been very clearly mentioned period from 6th century bc to 4th century ad it represent a represents a crucial phase in indian history and it is very easy to understand and this is the period which we see which we feel the during this period we feel the impact of second urbanization in india and this period witnessed number 1 as i have told you increase in trade and expansion of agriculture and new classes of merchants and artisans organized into guilds and uh, the groups this uh, these groups these merchants and artisan groups exercise their influence over politics and religious structure these are the points i am just narrating it on point wise for your better understanding you can also put for put down on your notebooks so that you can understand i am just summarizing it and putting forth for your better understanding put down note down them these groups these artisan groups and merchants groups exercised their influence over politics and religious establishments religious structure and along with that there was rise of two heterodox sects revolutionary sects buddhism and jainism hmm just a minute buddhism and jainism now please hold on hold on hold on hold on uh come to the page number 5 ah uh, yes now you see yesterday i was i, I was just explaining the features of urbanization and the traits of urbanization as i had explained you just go one by one number 1 permanent settlement in dense aggregation permanent settlement in dense aggregation means dense population large size settlement i had given it as a um, as a summarized in a summarized way large settlements
Number two, uh, Dr. Sahu, please say, come to the second page. Uh, number two, uh, num then monumental buildings. I told you yesterday also I had given this monumental buildings ruling class, a writing technique. Predictive science, which we can say technological innovation that I had given the name technological innovation. Artistic expression. Trade and commerce for vital materials. Decline in importance of kingship. Uh, please, uh, we shall proceed. Uh, next page. Uh, bring it to the guilds. Traders, uh, this is the thing. Traders, artisans, and guilds. What was the importance of the guild? As I told you, merchants, artisans, craftsmen, they organized themselves into different guilds for their protection, for the protection of their interest, interest of their crafts, interest of their arts, and interest of their job, so that nobody can exploit them and they could not be, they should not, they could not be cheated by anybody. That was the main thing why guilds were organized. And later on, the guilds, they also enhanced their importance by exercising their influence, not only on their own trade, but also in different aspects of the society. For example, as I told you, they exercise their importance in the social as well as religious and also political structure of the then time. And that li there lies their importance. And what was the function of the guilds? What was the function of the guilds? That the function of the guilds were number. Guilds were functioning as banks, banks, bank, you know, when in times of need, the members of the guilds can borrow money or wealth for their own subsistence as well as sustenance and for their trade, for increasing the volume of their trade, for increasing their sphere of trade. And um, they also interfered in the administrative work, in the administrative control, in the political power. They also procured raw materials for manufacturing. And they also locate markets for finished goods. Guilds. This was the work of the guilds. Guilds can procure, guilds could procure raw materials and distribute it among the members. For example, if you go to Kotak um, uh, Noa Patna, here is a place called Noa Patna near Kotak, and uh, the, it is uh, it is famous for weaving, weaving of uh, sari, and you must have heard this Maniabanda sari, and there this uh, thread, I mean silk thread or cotton thread, are procured by the Samabaya Samiti. Samabaya Samiti means cooperative society. So this was a part, it is, a, it is also the case of a guild, guild of weavers of Nua Patna and Mania Bandha, who were procuring silk for the entire community, not for a single man. And from there, the members of the guilds or the cooperative society will take thread, cotton thread or silk thread, and then they will weave them into sari or other garments. Could you, now, can you, um, do you understand? Would you like it? So they are, this is the importance of the guilt, function of the guilds, as well as meaning of the guilt. Any question, anybody else? I invite your question, please.
हेलो हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग हेलो पोलिटिकल इनफ्लुएंस एज वेल एज in those times as can be demonstrated quoting from the text and the scripture at length it has been stated that the guilds had their laws based on custom and usages regarding organization production fixation of price and commodities etc these rules were generally recognized by the state the laws were safeguard against their state operation and interference in guild affair it is very easy and i have already enumerated and you can also understand if you read it yourself still then i am just enumerating it in a very simple language guild laws was nothing very serious the laws and rules were framed to protect and safeguard the interest of the members of the guilds for example udaharan swarup gote tantubaya samiti hoi chi tantubaya samiti ro for example bhubaneswar tantubaya samiti re 40 jan member achanti se 40 jan member ankar जो सब इंटरेस्ट अच्छी स्वार्थ अच्छी विभिन्न कम अच्छी विभिन्न प्रकार लाभ अच्छी प्रोटेक्ट कर गिल्ड राम गिल्ड है गोटे समिति भाया गोटे कोपरेट सोसाइटी भाया ये समिति राम है लोकंर स्वार्थ को से सुरक्षित रखे सो दैट स्टेट राष्ट्र राज्य व सरकार गिल्ड रेम्बर मान अप्रेस कर ठक पारे लोक मैंने ठक पारे यहाँ थी गिल्ड राम आ कौन कौन जे सेम साइमल्टेनियसली गिल्ड रो मेंबर माने मध्य कोनोसी प्रकार रो प्रोडक्शन रे प्राइस रे मध्य हेरफेर करिवे नै इट मींस गिल्ड रो मेंबर मानु को जदी केई ठकामी रो शिकार करिवे नै गिल्ड रो मेंबर मध्य अन्य मानु को ठकामी रो शिकार होबा को देबे नै अन्य मानु को ठकेबे नै एवं एई दृष्टि कोटिले मध्य कहिचंती कोटिले ता अर्थशास्त्र रे मध्य एनुमेरेट करिचंती लेखिचंती जे superintendent of account will keep the records of the customs and transaction of corporation corporation la guild guda jo transaction ho guild re samiti man kare tar record kiya rakhibe superintendents of accounts jo officer ta ek record rakhibe so that guild ro kono se sabhya jodi kono se prakar thakami ba sebela kono se jinsa karanti tale seta dhara padibo hala au kon thila lo jodi profit kichhi hala samiti ro ताको समस्त शेयर करिवे यदि लॉस भी हला समस्त मध्य से लॉस रो भागीदार हेबे लॉस को सहिबे दिस वाज जनरल गिल लॉ एवं यदि केई एजेंस को भांगिला एम्बेजल कला तुषारपात कर देला अर्थ नै गला गिल रो पैसा को आत्मसात कर देला तल कोन होबो ता पई दंड विधान करा जिवो एवं के दंड विधान करिवो गिल रो जे ज्येष्ठ अछंति ज्येष्ठ ताको कोआ जाय श्रेणी गिल को कोआ जाउतला श्रेणी संस्कृत रे तार जो मुख्य थे कहला ज्येष्ठ जेठिक पाली भाषा कहला जेठिक श्रेष्ठी श्रेष्ठ श्रेष्ठी नगर श्रेष्ठी भी कहला राजा राज दरबार खास जगह थी नगर श्रेष्ठी श्रेष्ठ अनुरोध राजा से दंड विधान करे दिस इज गिल
Now, Carol, what's your question? Dr. Sau, you just raised question because your students are not raising questions. So please, you raise. So we shall discuss. They will hear. You see, guild head of the guild. Head, guild head. I told you, Jethaka. Jethaka, and then Pramukha. These are the names. It has been mentioned in this um, books, in your um, study material. It has been mentioned. Sresti. I had already told you. Then there were also executive officer in the guild, those who were supervising the day-to-day -day business of the guild. So this is about guild. Then you come to the next uh, point. Anybody else? Please ask your doubts so that we can carry on. Then uh, Dr. Sao, please, uh, uh, yes, anybody? You are asking, somebody is asking me? Or they are joining? Now, Sradhanjali has asked me question. Sradhanjali Sao, you are regular attending my session. Have you any question? Are you clear about all the, all the units? Unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. Your mic. Your mic. Unmute it. Vidut Lata, you had a question last um, um, yesterday that uh, what is um, Sramana philosophy? Uh, did you go through your uh, study material? Sramana philosophy, there is a section. In the yes, unit, uh, yes, unit uh, six, unit six or seven, there is a section Ramana philosophy. I had go yes, told you Ramana yes. Buddhist Ramana, Jaina Bhikkhus. They are all called Ramana, but Bhikkhus in Buddhist pantheon, Nigrantha in um, your Jaina pantheon, and uh, Ramana, and also Ajivikas. They were also called Ramanas. All these Bhikkhus, those were ascetic, wandering. Ramana kari jo mane bulonti se manu ko sramana ko likho adla abang se mane they were beyond any law of the society they were beyond any rules and regulation of the religion they were living in some abode which were called ashrama or um, we can say that um, biharas like that sangha uh, um, I think I hope you have gone through uh, anybody. I want question. I want question. Now, the second organization is Then, the second organization is Then, South. Sir, hello. Hello. Sir, it, the past minute is understandable. It is about the bills, everything is understandable. It is easy. But the second name, the next name, the Chaitas and the Biharas. Okay. Hmm. Expression of their organized religion. Uh, just tell us in a brief, uh, briefly how they organize their religion and about it. Now, what uh, have you understood? Uh, what is a Bihara? Have you understood what is a Bihara? Means travel. Huh? Traveling. Not Bihar traveling. Uh, Bihar <laughs> actually uh, means uh, uh, traveling. Literary. Literary is the mean. Literary, it means traveling. Literary, it means traveling. But uh, so far, our study is concerned, and so far, Buddhism is concerned. It is, is a it place. Like so, like hall. And it. Uh, they basically fall with a number of cells along all sides and with your without your veranda. Okay, this is you are just express you are just uh, expressing the uh, structural feature of a bihar. Bihar yes, is sir. a place. Okay, sir, place. Sir, I, sir, just describe it, sir. Just huh. okay, sir. 
it is a place where uh, as generally it is biharas are associated with a buddhist uh, order buddhist sangha um, the sanghas are located in biharas and they are this place where um, long row of uh, rooms are constructed without baranda or like that or with baranda also and uh, and the middle of the bihara there is a stupa or at the backward of the bihara there is a stupa stupa is generally associated with some of the relics of buddha uh, after his mahapari nirbana and uh, that is the place for the worship and the reverence and there the monks they used to stay in groups and they used to practice their penas their religious discourses and um, chaitya is also associated with bihara it is a absidal structure um, in the center of which there is again um, the provision of stupa or place of reverence where uh, jaina monks uh, jaina or buddhist monks used to stay and why it is called organized religion why this chaityas and biharas are uh, credited with uh, the organized uh, religious uh, activities it is very clear that when they are come they are living in a congregation in a group definitely they were discussing and they were practicing the religious belief the religious principle or religious state of their respective religion and in course of time these places bihar and chaitya became the center of religious importance of the particular sect either of jainism or of buddhism and that helped for bringing up a bringing up this religion into an organized shape into an organized shape if you go through this uh, biharas um, and uh, sir please uh, would you like to please uh, bring the um, unit unit 9.1 unit 9 9 unit 9 Doctor, sir, please bring unit nine to the screen. Yes, nine point one. Yes, here. I have told you the structural. Bihar was basically a hall with a number of cells along all sides and with a with a with or without baranda. You told it, and I also enumerated. These caves were simple with sparse decoration in the form of ornamental pillars. These are the structural feature. We have nothing to deal with this structural feature. Next page. Next page. Next page, please. Ah, just you come to the second paragraph, first paragraph of this page. The spread of Buddhism to distant lands of peninsular India, central India, and also through the countries is often associated with the mechanism of expanding trade networks and empire building activities. There is no doubt that it was primarily the proselytizing efforts of dynamic and enterprising monks who ventured through unknown lands to preach the creed that led to the spread and popularity of Buddhism in far off lands. But the process of second urbanization, with the spread of which spread from Gangetic Valley to the rest of the country, with its growing trading network, definitely accelerated the spread of Buddhism. This is that they have given the why the Buddhism spread into these areas. Next, next, next page. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Nine point one. Nine point one. Yes. Yes.
Uh, yes. Um, the phenomenon, phenomenon of urbanization and trade, which started in the 6th century, we see again momentum in the subsequent centuries. The volume of trade increased immensely as the trade with the Mediterranean world, which probably existed for a long time, was intensified by 3rd, 2nd century BC. Almost all parts of the country expand, experienced a phase of urbanism accompanied by the emergence of a powerful imperial state, agricultural expansion, growing economy, characterized by increased of volume of trade, appearance of metal currency, as well as craft specialization. The marginal area of prohibit marginal areas or prohibited areas outside the pale of mainstream of Brahmanical culture of Gangetic Valley became accessible through various trade routes. The knowledge of uh, earliest routes come from the religious texts which mention the travel of stray person from place to place. With the intensification of trade, especially with the Mediterranean world, the Western text mention a number of cities and urban centers. Much information is also gathered from archaeological evidence, evidences testifying to... Next page, please. Next page, please. Sites in Central and Southern India, uh, India, a record donation primarily by traders and various craftsmen, occasionally from far off places. Now, come here. Here, nothing has been given about Viharas and Chaityas. But one thing we can get that how it became possible for the religions like Buddhism and also to some extent Jainism to be organized religious sects uh, through Viharas and Chaityas. Now, you see. These traders and merchants, those who are traveling from North India to South India, they took certain routes and they become these routes become trade routes in course of time. For example, through Central India, that is now today's Madhya Pradesh, then to Maharashtra, then to South India through Karnataka, then Andhra Pradesh, then Tamil Nadu, like that. This trade route was moving. And this trade route was not frequented by only traders. These trade routes also was frequented by, by whom? By monks of Jain order or Buddhist order. Maximum in maximum cases it was by the Buddhism, Buddhist monks. These trade route, routes were frequented in maximum cases by Buddhism. And along with these trade routes, what we see? We see the Biharas or Chaityas, Stupas and these are the monumental buildings or these are the monumental heritage of Buddhism or a part of, or, or to some extent Jainism that provided us the information that how these Biharas and Stupas were built, were built along with this highway, highway or, or along with this trade route and which were funded by not only state agencies, not only state agency but by the traders, the merchants. And here, the Buddhist monk used to stay for certain periods of a year. And that certain period, as you know, Chaturmasa, that is the four months consecutively, which is traditionally called as the rainy season in India. They used to stay there and discuss uh, the, and um, uh, took up the discourses of their religion. And they were instrumental. They were instrumental in propagating their religious discourses, their religious principle traits in and around that area. And that helped these two religious sects to be an organized religious sects by, by this establishment of Biharan and Chaityas. This question was put forth by Rakesh, I think. Yes, sir. Rakesh, could you, could you, um, could you get it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, Chaitya? Mm -hmm. Hello? Oh, yes, I'm sir, hearing you. Sir, Chaitya. Ah. Sir, I, I know that the Bihara is the place of living of monks in the four months of rainy season. Mm. And they discussed about the religious texts. But the Chaitya is the king of worship. Chaitya, Chaitya is a place of, was a place of worship. Some historians they suggest that Chaitya was not a not the result of any Buddhism or Jainism, but it was pre-Buddhism, pre-Buddhist. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
Chaito was existing before Buddhism also. So Chaito was a um, upside down structure uh, with uh, some archaic uh, doorways, uh, which was a place for worship by these uh, um, by these people uh, belonging to this heterodox sects like Buddhism and Jainism. And uh, in, in in most cases in Chaitas, there were some sort of um, relics, relics of Buddha, relics of some religious order. They were revering. Ah, you, you 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 may you may put forth your opinion, Rakesh. You put forth your opinion. What do you yes, want to say? Ah. Say here written that uh, the Chaitya complex also at times contained a stupa, which was the main object of worship. Ah, 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 which yes. was the main object of worship in Buddhism for the introduction of the image of worship. Ah. It is. It, I told you, na. Chaitya also contains sometimes a stupa or some relics of Buddha or some um, relics of reverence, which was the object of worship. I told you. So Chaitya was it was in a in a different way. We can say that Chaitya was like a temple. Chaitya was like a temple, while Biharas were like ashramas, as in our Hindu order, ashramas for living of the monks. For accommodating monks, monks to live, and mandira temples for worship, like that in Buddhism, biharas were like ashramas for the monks to stay, and chaityas were the like temples for reverence, for worshiping, for um, offering prayers, like that. So, what is your doubt exactly? You tell me. Sir, I, I, got, I got my points and uh, my doubt is clear. I, at first, I think that uh, Chaitya was the part of the uh, body part of the Buddha and it was received by the monks. No, 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 no. Actually, body, Buddha, 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 Buddha. body part of Buddhas were kept inside a relic. That relic is called Stupa. Stupa is a bulbous self. Bulbous self uh, monument or a um, structure and surrounded by a relic with a uh, with a space for circumventing. Circument I mean Mandira Jim the Prodakana Koranti, Chaitar Mother Chari Pakara circument Korea Pai, the Prodakana Potha, Abong a Prodakana Potha, uh Chari Pakar would a railing thai, ta bitruka would inner railing thai, ta bitter would stupa thai, stupa which would a bulbous sep, would a dome sep, dome sep mani bujipartu, put a um conkoya the gwame, um gulia akrutira would on dakuti koi pere gombuja to no gombuja tower ijo, on dakuti. So, Tabitha Buddhankara, Kuajae, the Buddhankara Kurushi body part as relics, it has been placed. Jimmy the Amar Odisha Regota Jagaji, Donto Purabuliconti, it is an ancient time which is placed in which is situated in Ganjam. Paluri is identified with Dantopura. It is called the Danta of Buddha has been placed there, had been placed there, and there was a stupa. So it is generally believed that the Buddhist, uh, Buddhist, uh, they kept uh, in later years they kept some parts of Buddha like hair or um, some um, um, bone or teeth like that, and um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an object of reverence, um, they became stupa. So it's sometimes Chaitya also contain um, stupas and also biharas in um, Ratnagiri and Lalitagiri. They are seventh century. Ratnagiri and Lalitagiri must have known it uh, near Kotak. Um, a number of stupas and chaitas are there, and uh, you will find there are different biharas. Uh, this uh, long pillared hall um, can sell to accommodate monks for their living. So you will find there are stupas. So all this suggests that uh, these, these settlements. These structures, or we may call that that these abodes, abodes, I am quite aware of. Passos thali, jo jagar se maine rohile ekathi ki. Si jo ekathi ki rohile discourse kalle, abong samanu ko funding kalle ko maine merchants maine traders maine abong sometimes state was also funding. Even jo ami jinte Gautam Putra saathe ko ni abong tankor purbo chajma hebe noyani ka samanu samoste funding korte le Buddhi ji Buddhist Bihar manu ko. Raja Manu the funding Gortile. So funding Korea Dora, Emanan Korto, 
मेन्टेनान्स चिंता ना सो फल धर्म को प्रसार करने प्रचार करने गोटे प्रकार निजक नियोजित करते सेक्रिफाइस देम सेल्स एंड देट लेड फर एन अर्गानाइज रिलीजिययस सिस्टम ओके Came back and began my session, and so just I want uh, five minutes uh, okay. refreshment, a uh, glass of water, and a okay, okay. Let me, uh, let me, let uh, me let me just yes. acquaint uh, these uh, units with the student. Let them uh, go through it, yes. and uh, so that they can ask question. Okay. Uh, please, please help me. Please help me. Okay, okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From uh, yes, sir. from unit one yes, to unit two, uh, uh, from unit one till the end of the unit, I am just showing it in the slide. You write, just write down the important uh, points that you can ask. Uh, to the resource person, it will be easier for you to ask question to the resource person. Is it clear? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Please, I'll show you one thing. Okay, uh, just you. This is the unit one. Yes, sir. Okay, this is the beginning of your unit one. Re reconstructing ancient society with special reference to sources. okay this is these are the sources sir sir has already explained to you that epigraphic sources numismatic sources archaeology literature okay this this way you can because uh, in order to get into the the text if you see the content of the areas which will be taught or which we can find in the study materials definitely it will help them first is introduction then uh, sources sources means epigraphic sources numismatic sources archaeology and literature you can if you have any because once if you understand epigraphy then you will be able to write what is epigraphy what is numismatics what is archaeology what is its role in structuring restructuring history clear now and what is the role of uh, literature in uh, writing history so you, you easily it will be or it will be useful for you okay then interpretation how you will interpret those sources like epigraphic sources numismatic sources archaeology literature then ancient society then anthropological readings nature of archaeology nature of archaeology textual sources then summary and glossary and exercises these are the contents of your unit 1 so this is the introduction no need to write sources this is the epigraphic sources Ep epigraphic sources means the inscriptions then this is the numismatic sources this is means the coins study of coins is very clearly written you see epigraphic means the study of inscriptions which you can find it on the temples or you which you can find on the caves or which you can find in the edicts so these are the inscriptions which generally help to write history of which depict or highlight 
the various achievements or social economic and political structure or political history of a particular period then come to your numismatic sources numismatic sources means study of coins so there are different types of coins generally coins made of gold silver and copper so it speaks about the economic situation of that period particular period if gold coin suppose gold coin it indicates that the richness of the society silver means is a little bit because the coins can give us information about the some chronological issues because the different rulers in different periods of time they have issued coins so these coins can speak about the chronological order of the dynasty then uh, different uh, ruling dynasties and as well as the condition of the society as a whole then then it also speaks about the different context level because some roman coins are discovered in india and some indian coins are discovered in rome it indicates what it implies that there was a trade relation between india and rome or india and italy so the indian traders they visited rome and at the same time the roman traders also visited india so these trading relations also also highlighted or evidenced or substantiated by the numismatic sources this is the role of the numismatic sources then come to archaeology archaeology is the study of material remains of the past because archaeology it is a scientific way of digging out or exploring the historical sites or historical or relics or monuments and through this excavation or exploration we can find out sufficient information regarding the structure regarding the chronology regarding the economy and regarding the society in particular so these are the this is the literature so last is literature literature also speaks about the different ruling dynasties the different uh, i can say also it speaks about different existence of different kind of epics uh, so it's also includes epics your upanishads ramayan mahabharata on all the all the re religious epics or uh, which speaks about the religious condition of the society during that period it also speaks about the dharma law rules regulations and uh, the society used to follow it so these are the arthashastra is also includes arthashastra arthashastra speaks about the polity the political structure which was uh, uh, followed of what the political structure was there during the mauryas or during the mauryan rule then it is the interpretation generally how you can interpret the history with the help of epigraphy numismatics literary sources i'm back and uh, the archaeology okay these are the things then uh, beside that this is the important uh, concept or uh, important items which included in the unit 1 then come to nature of archaeology all are included here because if you understand the minimum concepts then you can be able to write then these are the question you can ask okay discuss the various sources of reading india's past why is interpretation is important discuss in the light of the explanation of afford above write a short note on the reading archaeology discuss the text of rigveda as a source and what constitute a source for the study of history these are the important questions from this unit then unit 2 hunting gathering early farming society pastoralism because these are the economic activities it 
covers in in uh, it covers in the unit two hunting gathering which took place in the in the you can say in the pre harappan society then the early farming society which took place in the or you can say the farming or early farming society which took place in the harappan civilization or pastoral civilization which took place in aryan civilization so this way you can also differentiate archaeological role of archaeological evidence for the paleolithic societies what archaeology says because when a place is excavated so different kind of tools and artifacts are excavated or are found and which also indicates or highlights or substantiate the facts and events which are related to the the paleolithic societies then social structures of hunting and gathering societies in the hunting when we talk about hunting and gathering societies we have to know the society as a whole then what type of structural system was there which which generally uh, includes in our day to day life then if this hunting and gathering society is there is there any proper social structure was maintained or was there or not then we have to then you have to explain it then what's about the paleo mesolithic age or middle middle stone age then what's about the neolithic continuum or the process of domestication because this uh, neolithic period you can find is a new era which is different from paleolithic and mesolithic age you know which is completely new era from paleolithic and mesolithic age because neolithic period you can find the domestication of animals the people started domesticating animals then uh, they kept a different kind of animals as their pet and which helped them in the different types of activities which are related to the particularly their agriculture you know and food food also it is related to the food so this way that uh, sir i am i have come back okay sir and, okay uh, i am listening i am very well you are explaining thank you very much thank you for your assistance and the cooperation uh, again i'm i've come back so let's begin uh, lana uh, dr sau please help me to uh, to, uh, to bring the unit unit 11 you need 11 to this screen uh, this is this unit exactly thank you now i i invite my learners to discuss on unit 11 in the block 3 and this chapter is a very interesting chapter this the best chapter is very interesting chapter and it needs a lot of understanding uh, uh, some please mic is on please uh, unmute uh, please mute the mic please mute the mic uh, this is the unit A unit number eleven, marriage and family life, notions of antiquity, and this pattern in human life. अरे ये मतलब डुलू खेली बुबाया का Somebody's mic is on. Uh, somebody mic is on please okay thank you now this topic as i have told you dr south please help me to bring this uh, chapter 9 unit 11 on the screen and dr saup can i have your help ha ah. and this is chapter 11 and dear learners please uh, concentrate on this uh, chapter 11 why 
I select on my one uh, to discuss about this chapter 11 is no doubt interesting, but also it needs a lot of understanding to understand the culture, to understand the tradition, social tradition of India as of today. And with the reference of this uh, chapter of the past and during the time that uh, in the context of the time which we are discussing. So this chapter is a chapter of uh, marriage. Um, please come, um, please bring it to the heading. The Please bring the heading, heading, heading. Uh, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. OK. Dr. Sau, are you there? Now, dear learner, please. Um, uh, this chapter reads, Marriage and family life, notions of untouchability, changing patterns of born and jati. Uh, I, I hope you will initiate this, uh, initiate the discussion. Uh, marriage and family life, notions of untouchability, changing pattern in Banna and Jati. This is totally um, related to social system, social traditions, which has been, which have been evolved through the ages from Vedic age to this age, which we are studying in the context of the time, um, early historic period. Um, in this chapter, we are going to encounter, we are going to um, face certain uh, topics like first of all introduction, interpersonal relationship, gender in family life, marriage, pressures of social reproduction, changing social pattern, Bernan Jati, summary, glossary and exercises. First, uh, you go through the introduction and you will get a glimpse of the entire chapter. Then we shall come to interpersonal uh, relationship, gender in family life. Um, Dr. Sapp, please, 11.1. 11.1. Dr. Sao, are you hearing me? Okay, learners, uh, have you any, have you got any question or any doubts? Have you gone through this uh, unit? Now, marriage is, a, is an important sacrament and Indian tradition. This is called a sacrament, a sacred uh, events in the life of every human being. So far, Indian tradition is concerned. And uh, in course of time, there have been there have been some rules framed in order to make this system, make this sacrament more systematic and society oriented. And in order to maintain the purity and sacredness in the family life. So there are different types of marriages. And I hope if you have not gone through, please look at the scheme that I am going through. You can understand and I'll just explain them. 11.1 interpersonal relationship, gender in family life. It reads, a close, close look at the Buddhist and Jaina literature gives some glimpses of interpersonal relationship and gender relationship in conjugal life. There existed conjugal love and affection between husband and wife. Sometimes, however, the wife's devotion to her husband arises out of duty rather than love. Still, a woman is valued by her husband more than by
ओके हेलो एंड डॉक्टर साहु स्क्रीन इज ऑफ आई वाज प्रेजेंटिंग यस नेक्स्ट इलेवन पॉइंट वन आई वाज प्रेजेंटिंग इलेवन पॉइंट वन Yes. First page, previous page, previous page, previous page. Yes, that I, I, I'm, I'm just surprised. Still, a woman is valued by her husband more than by her relative. In struggle of the sutta, it is said that husband should treat his wife with respect, courtesy, and faithfulness. In turn, she should be hospitable and just, skilled and diligent at work, and should safeguard the property of her husband. Next step, next page, please. Page number thirty-three. Next page, please. Next page. Next page, please. So these are the things. It was. Um, uh, these are the things were expected in a family life. From a woman, and in another Buddha, in in another place, Buddha addressing young man, woman about to go to their husband's house says, number one, a wife rises earlier than her husband and is the last one to retire. She willingly helps her husband carries out his wishes and speaks with him affably. Number two, the she honors, uh, the reverses, uh, reverses and respects all whom her husband reverses, such as his parents. Um, brahmanas shramanas etc number 3 she manages the household and those who live in it she is dealt and nimble in the crafts of her husband his household and she knows how to get the work done and these are the things have been men mentioned and enumerated in buddhist tradition buddhist literature about the family life and the duty of a woman now i i, I would like to take the to the next section This is the this is the uh, section which is enumerating about the family life and the duty of a woman. Next, next page, please, Doctor Sir. Next page, please bring me to next page. These are all about women. I I I must take you to the. Just to give me one minute. Now coming to eleven point two, marriage facet and uh, uh, facets of social reproduction. Uh, it has been mentioned in the Rig Vedic times. Most of the ancient, the most the most ancient of the Vedic tradition, the women enjoyed an exalted position. I had already in eleven point one. I have already discussed about the tradition that Buddha Buddhist literature has provided. Buddhist literature has embodied in themselves. About the duty of a wife, about the family life, uh, centering a wife or a woman. Now coming to marriage, facets of social reproduction. Now, what was the importance of marriage? Here it has been mentioned. In, from the Rig Vedic time, marriage has been described as a very sacred, sacred, sacred and beautiful uh, sacrament. Of an individual, of an individual, 
various smritis and dharma shastras have given importance to this uh, institution of marriage and they are all they are all of the same view that it is a bond between two persons two souls which should be based upon purity and sacredness and in this context you can see different smritis and especially bashchayana contemplates marriage as being normally arranged by the parents and other guardians or of both the parties and according to this according to this great saint bashchayana there are only four forms of marriages recognized during this period when this bashchayana's kama sutra was reprodu- was um, written this four type of marriages recognized were brahma prajapatya arsa daiva i must tell you here that there are different types of marriages forms of marriages marriages no doubt it is a bondage it is a bond between two souls two persons but there were different forms of marriages how marriages were conducted in those time during the time of early historic age during the time of gupta age during the gupta period around 4th 3rd 4th century ad we get to know that there are mainly two types of marriages and these are the authors smritikaras dharma shastra writers they gave they gave two types of marriages uh, mainly broadly two types what are they prasasta and aprasasta according to them prasasta means which are acceptable marriages which are acceptable and uh, aprasasta means marriages which are not accepted by the society you remember one thing you must have encountered that uh, there are different types of marriages some marriages are accepted by the society some marriages are liked by the society liked by the people family members and the neighbors the neighborhood uh, um, families and some marriages are not liked rather they are looked down why because society do not have uh, does not have any recognition or does not have any such sanction towards that marriage therefore this mithirikaras and um, writers of ancient times they mentioned two types of marriages that prasasta and aprasasta and what are the prasastas these four types of marriages as i told you as enumerated by vaschayana in his kama sutra that uh, these were the marriages brahma daiva prajapatya and arsa these are the four types of marriages generally modern days we nowadays we are having this traditional marriage form which is called brahma or prajapatya arsa and uh, um, that um, another um, type i told you daiva marriages are not being held in our common um, society and they are of, of different society for example arsa marriages are very much prevalent among the sages among the rishis saint who are living in a, um, in a different way um, but having families in that family in those families arsa and daiva marriages were prevalent and among the aprasasta marriages there were four types of again four types of marriages for example gandharva this is called gandharva viva then there was rakshasa viva then paishacha and um, the fourth one i am just uh, forgetting asura 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 viva gandharva asura paishacha and what i told rakshasa gandharva viva you know that uh, viva which is generally which is generally um, uh, done um, by the consent of two parties girls and boys um, for before a deity or before a god before any god or in a very uh, secret in a very secret manner the sacred act was performed in a secret manner this is gandharva viva generally it is a type of love marriage uh, society does not give sanction to this type of marriage because always society looks upon um, those those marriages which are uh, sanctioned and guaranteed 
and also fixed by the parents. Therefore, this Gandhar Viva, although in this marriage, two con the consent of two parties are there, still then it is not preferred. Then there was another type of marriage, which is Rakhyasa. Rakhyasa marriage is uh, called that marriage, which is uh, done by forcibly taking out the bride. Uh, you must have uh, uh, you must have heard this uh, incident that Bhishma forcibly took away uh, these uh, two daughters, uh, two uh, princess, Rajakan Nadija and Rajakan Amba Ambika, Ambali Kanga Maduru, Amba Abung Amika Kuneastile, um, Jobardasti, Abung Mahavarata Lakaichi, Katriang Nang to Bijeno, Prasasta Harang Balat. It means Katria Manako Kulare, Prasasta Merejo Chikono. Jabardist Takianik Ba Mutianiki Bahava Modeuchi Prosesto. Kinto society as a whole receives sense they don't give recognition to this type of marriage as prosesto, not accept rule. It is called prosesto. So this is called uh, this um, taking away forcibly. The bride taking away the bride forcibly. This is the um, second rakhyasa type of marriage. This is not uh, accepted by the society. It is looked down upon. It is looked down upon. It was uh, Hated by the social members, by the members of the society. Then there was another form, it was Paisacha. Paisacha marriage is that marriage which is done by uh, intoxicating the um, bride, intoxicating. Among, and when this bride was in intoxicated manner, a marriage was being solemnized in the um, in the state of affair where bride was not in her sense. So this is called paisacha. Jabardasti, taro achet avastata ko vivaha kariya ko paisacha wali gaanti. Abang asura vivaha is also like that with um, severe fighting after defeating and killing the kingsmen of the bride when this marriage is uh, solemnized. This marriage is also called um, asura vivaha. These four types are called aprasasta marriage and these are not accepted by the society because marriage as I have told you, marriage is a marriage is a social phenomena. It is a social sacrament. It is a social institution, and there should be acceptability by the whole of the society, and uh, not possibly anything can be done. Therefore, um, this sort of um, these forms of marriages are not accepted. Oppressors the marriages are not accepted. Now. This is our marriage. Then the, there is also some um, some uh, points on the um, position of the women. Women were having and their ample say in the marriage. Sometimes their their consent was also asked. And uh, you know, in the um, case of Swambara, women were given full independence, full liberty to choose their marriage choose their groom. Therefore, it is called Swambara. It means choosing their own groom is called Swambara. And now, they had also in marriage, a girl used to get some wealth from her parents' house. It is called Sridhana. Not only parents' house, but also girls used to get some presentation, some uh, wealth from the side of the groom also. And that is the sole position of the girl or the wife and it is called Sridhana, and she had the sole authority over this wealth. And this is about this marriage and jati, a marriage and um, family. Uh, then there is, um, there, uh, there is another thing, Barna and Jati. Barna and Jati, and uh, marriage, when in context of Barna and Jati, when marriages are solemnized or conducted, there are certain things that Swamma Gotri Vibhahi Parivani. Marriage within the same Gotra is no, is prohibited, was prohibited. Because Gotra means belonging to the same kin, same clan, same family. Therefore, marriage between in between same Gotra, members of the same Gotra, belonging to the same Gotra was prohibited. Similarly, marriage within the caste was permitted. Intercaste marriage was prohibited. Intercaste marriage was not accepted. And if there will be some intercaste marriages, these marriages were termed with different terminology, different terms. For example, if there was an intercaste marriage where 
the boy belong boy belong to the higher caste and girls and girls belongs to belong to the lower caste it was called anuloma type of marriage and if the boy was of a lower caste and girl was of a higher caste then it is what was pratiloma type of marriage and in this marriage the offsprings were not recognized as social member they were given some low status even from anuloma marriage where offsprings are born from a higher caste father and lower caste mother offsprings were not given due status in the society they were given some low order for example um, some low crafts or um, work were assigned to them they were not accepted to that caste and when in case of pratilu marriage and the situation was very harsh and the result of this marriage offspring from this marriage were given the status of chandalas untouchables so in this way we see the because of the marriage also there was proliferation in caste yeah, right. proliferation proliferation in caste different caste on the basis of occupational groups emerged because of this pratiloma and anuloma type of marriages of course another factor was that foreign invasion foreigners who came to india they were also given some sort of status in the caste structure of the society but major factor lies with this type of marriages so this is about the marriage and family life that i gave you a brief introduction in for your understanding and uh, i must uh, uh, tell you that uh, my dear learners please go through the books the um, learning materials and if you don't go through it is not possible feasible in our part to cover the whole length of the topics and to enumerate them if you go through and you ask the question like that uh, gentleman asked me about bihara chaitya then this girl also asked me about this um, um, uh, guild then i clarified them then i will took up some new things this will be helpful for our discussion session for our counseling session and it is not feasible for anybody to speak out for two hours constantly you should also come to our help you should also put forth your doubts your question and not only doubt and question you can also um put forth your opinion you can also put forth your opinion and also um, supplements your views put forth your views whatever you have studied you can also put for them here as sir was discussing about this archaeological numismatic epigraphic sources and how very scientifically he was explain it dr sau was explaining you so also you can also give put forth your views you can also uh, advance your views in this session so that we can carry on with an um, discussion session i am going to discussion kari pariya am i to etta bada jinsa kai pariba ni am going to discussion kariya so that there will be some doubts there will be clarification on some doubts okay am am i audible yes sir okay sir i have a question yes sir i have a question ah you are most welcome sir. you your questions are always welcome if you ask me then i can carry on with my discussion yes your question please sir in 10 unit um, unit 10 uh, tinani yes. concept please briefly discuss unit 10 unit 10 tinani concept tinani tinani this is in context of the south tinai 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 hmm and uh, dr sau if you hear me please uh, bring it to the 10 number 10 uh, unit 10 Wait, wait. At ten point two, ten point two. Ah, 
regions and their cultures. Tinai are the landscape, are generally Tinai concept is nothing but a concept based upon the landscape. Landscape means different region. For example, uh, where from you are, uh, who is asking this question? Sir, Santoshini. Santoshini, uh, yes, I must ask you, from which area you have come? Sir, Barampur. Barampur. Now, you see, uh, in Odisha, <laughs> you have concept like Baleshwar, they will call it Uttar, Uttar Baleshwar. Okay, then Katak, uh, Katki, then uh, Kendrapada, and all these areas are called in the name of Malo and Cholo, Malo. Then uh, this Denkanal, Keunjar, these areas in the name of Garjat, and uh, your Barampur uh, in the name of Dakini or Dakinanchal. In this way, as you have concept of this kind of landscape, a uh, regional concept, uh, terming different region in, in different names, Tinai concept is also based of on certain landscape, certain regional uh, identity, a regional identity, I'm the area, regional identity. Therefore, your, it has been clearly mentioned in this uh, um, Tinai concept 10.2.1. Ancient Tamil said divided the Tamil country into five distinct ecological zones. Ecological zones means the zones with the different geographical and climatic condition with the different geographical and climatic condition. Geographical and climatic condition means the sabu anchalare, amara thanda huye ni ke sabu anchalare garam huye ni. Kethoda anchalare garam thai, kethoda ka thanda thai, kethoda ka santosanthi anchal thai. Pani chia, paniya, mene kadwa. Kethoda ka suska anchal thai, pathuriya, pahadiya. Similarly, the these are called ecological zones. And these ecological zones are called thinai. Each zone with different characteristics, distinct characteristics are called Tinai. The concept of Tinai can be compared to the modern ecosystem approach adopted by the study of the culture. The five Tinais in South, especially in, con in the context of Tamil country, they are number one, Kurinchi, which is mountainous zone, as I told you, Garjat, Amar Odisha is the mountainous zone. Tankar Simhiti goes on the Kurinchi. And Dr. Sao, can I have this uh, paper in a large manner, large manner, a bit large manner, full page? Can I get it like that? Yes, thank you. Ah, thank you, thank you. Currency, mountainous zone, Mulai, pastoral zone, Maruton, river and zone. Pastoral zone means, um, Mulai is pastoral zones, means Trunabumi. Jondi, Ghaso, Abang Onyana, Gulmajatia, would be the both Prakarabi one thing. Abang Jondi, Charana Bumi, I Posumanagai. That is called pastoral zone, similar coastal zone, Tago, Koyperi, Amodisar, pastoral zone. Then Maruton, river and zone. It means Jonti Pani ba Cholar, Jotesto, Subidachi ba Muluchi. Then we have Marutam. Marutam is the Marutam. Marutam means water. Marutam. This is uh, the um, zone, which, which is river zone, and uh, this is the zone where farmers lived. And uh, in this region, Indra was regarded as the god. Then, then there was Nethal. 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 Nethal was a coastal zone. Upukula Anchala. The people who lived here were known as Parataravas, Boruna, who was the god of this region. And uh, this main occupation of the people living in this zone was fishing and salt mining. Then the fifth one is Palai. 
the palai was a dry semi arid zone as i told you suskonchala dry semi arid zone and uh, as such there is no desert land in ancient tamil country we know it and um, landscapes of kurunji and mulai during the dry climate or in the time of rain pelwar became parched and resulted in the formation of palai land jondi amar rainfall kondi kurunji ebong mulai anchale re rainfall kami gale parvarti avasthare dry hi kise jaga guli ko parvarti avasthare palai anchale re parivrant ho jaye ebong ei anchale ro gades thile karabai and characteristics of this uh, palai landscape ba region is um is based upon uh, different factors its subsistence pattern was nothing but the people of this region as this was a dry and very uh, semi arid uh, land um, zone therefore agriculture was not possible in this region and there was not also any other occupation so these people belonging to this, this belonging to this region they adopted highway robbery they adopted the practice of highway robbery then plundering and another thing was cattle drifting the very interesting thing is that these are the occupation which they maintained for years together for generation to generation and this became a tradition for them not only that there was war between this um, between the region of this palai and marutam which was a riverine zone and agriculture was very good and cattle were also living there cattle were also in large scale and also there was mulai where mulai where pastoralists were living having cattle large number of cattle and these people from palai region were coming and cattle lifting from these areas and as there was some sort of were oh, fighting some sort of struggle and in this struggle the people who were die, who, who who died were regarded as heroes and here we see the system or or the custom of hero worshiping in this uh, fighting or struggle between this uh, people belonging to marutam region and the palai region palai region or this kurunji region and um, when somebody died and mulai region somebody died uh, that uh, death per that person was regarded as a hero and his statue was erected and revered worshiped and that was the condition where this hero worship tradition began in tamil culture okay okay sir your okay is very faint i think you are not convinced no sir no sir thank you sir thank you <laughs> may we please go through huh? today you go through what i told you can understand you can also ask me tomorrow very well you can ask me there is nothing uh, nothing okay, to sir. hesitate asanka kariyar kichu nai kimba kono chinta kariyar nai whatever question or doubt you have if you are not understanding it is not sufficient to understand you may put it we can discuss okay sir anything anybody else sir Yes, I'm hearing so that. Ah. Yes, you can put your question. Sir, uh, can you tell tell me where this uh, untouchability from? How did this untouchability took place? We have uh, read about from uh, four. Uh, what is what we call four types of dharma? Uh, four types of caste Brahma, Kshetriya, Vaishya, Shudra. from where this untouchable come from yes this now wow during this uh, letter with the catch when caste system was on the process of organizing itself when caste system was organizing itself it was on the process of organizing to be in an organized order of the society to be an organized order of the society there developed certain things certain social obstacles or we can say some social constraint which gave back to this untouchability there are mainly two things which were responsible for this uh 
concept of untouchability. Just now I told you one of the reason was the marriage system. As I told you that in the prothelomo type of marriage when the husband belongs to the lower caste and the girl belongs to the higher caste, the offsprings were not accorded a place in the society and they were regarded as untouchables and they were accorded some work which are inferior, which were which were very much inferior and which were not considered a very clean work. Now there are so many works, there were so many crafts, so many arts which were being done by various persons, various groups of people and they were accorded caste accordingly. But there were also certain clerk, certain work which were not accepted by the society as a cleanly work. For example, scavenger, the work of a scavenger, scavenging, sweeping or cleaning the dirt are not the work to be praised or to be um, taken as a work of recognition or respect. Therefore, these people, offsprings of this prathiloma type of marriage were left with no other option but to took up this work of chandalas. And there, this, this is the thing that there we see in the middle of the um, letter Vedic age also, we have got some reference to these untouchables. Now, let, later on, there are certain things which foreigners, those who came and they indulge in some lowly work, they were also regarded as untouchables. And among untouchables, mainly some sudras who were indulged in cultivation and some artistic and craftsmanship, they were not regarded as untouchables. But those sudras who took up this job of some menial work which are not considered as very cleanly work, they were also regarded as untouchable because they were dealing with some work which are not accepted as very cleanly work. Sapa common one, that seven dirty, but operiskar seven utochanti, olia utochanti, setiba and go chuiba, monacaragua. These are the social taboos framed during this uh, middle part and the latter part of the letter Vedic age. And gradually it continued. And during the time of Gupta period, we see that untouchables had a very pathetic life. They were allowed to live outside the civilization, outside the human settlements. Not only that, even if they were coming into the human habitation, if they are coming into some villages or coming into some settlement or some um, um, areas where people are living, higher caste people are living, they were instructed to come with some sign. Sign, sign means sanket. Kichi sanket dek samana siwe. For example, the body ko bade bade kasiwe, ba ghonte de bade baje baje kasiwe, so that people will be careful and they will keep distance from them. And this is somewhat very rude form of untouchability. Okay. Okay, Sir Dhanjali? Fine, sir. Okay, sir. So, anybody else? Anybody, anything? Okay, Dr. Sau, are you here there? Dr. Sau, are you there? Yes, sir. Ah. Dr. Sau, uh, should we uh, stop here? Uh, I mean... Wind up the session today now. Let me uh, just uh, because there's some student maybe uh, I'll uh, I'll tell them to ask question. Okay, okay, okay. you continue. I'm there. I'm here. I'm here. In the chat box also some. Let me check, please. Uh, Your learners, uh, do you have any question or we will wind up? Hello. Hello. Do you have a question? Any question or we will wind up the program? Uh, 
or you can write in the chat box so that i can present it before the resource person ha if you are hesitant then you can also write in the chat box okay uh, somebody has written uh, sarmila behera call top hero worship ha uh, just now i told yeah, that yeah. Uh, they can they can write in the chat box let them yes, write yes, in i told better better let you see okay. there was a palai region which was semi arid dry and there was no such occupation as a production a occupation which is related to production of uh, agriculture uh, production from agriculture for any industry so the people were not uh, left without any option they were left with the option of only plundering or looting or kept cattle uh, lifting what they were doing they were going to these other regions like marutham then uh, this uh, region of nethal where there was chance and uh, this region of mulai where there are the chance of uh, some uh, production and there was some um, possibility of some wealth and wealth for them was nothing but cattle and they were cattle lifters these people of mulai and uh, there in in course of this cattle lifting there was fighting between these people of mulai and also the nethal and uh, marutham what the, in this fight Uh, generally, there was a blood. These these fights were bloody fights. Raktak to sangar sohutla, and uh, sometimes people were also killed from both the sides, from the sides of the Palai and as well as from the sides of these other regions like Marutam and Mulai. And uh, those people who were killed in this fight were regarded as, as hero, and they were worshipped. Their statues were erected, and they were worshipped with reverence. as a hero and this is the um, this is the origin of the hero worship tradition in tamil in tamil country okay sarmila i think you are okay sir thank you welcome you can ask me don't hesitate to ask ha huh. anybody else payal are you going to ask me something payal Is there any more question in the chat box, Doctor Sahu? Just I am written in the chat box, no, but uh, waiting. Some are writing, I hope. Okay, 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 okay. I am waiting. Dear learners, please write your question in the chat box. Hello. dear learner dear learner i shall suggest you that you do one thing now you don't have any work left now it is like because lockdowns although lockdowns have been uh, uh, removed it is uh, lifted till then we are all in some way other um, confined within our household so there are a lot of times you can go through your study material and when you are going through your study material remember you uh, read carefully as well as you note down your doubts whenever you feel the a point is not actually to actually understood or totally understood you just put down on your notebooks as doubt and you can put it before me or before our dr sau uh, in the session in the learning session daily we are coming to you at uh, 6 o'clock and we are continuing up to 8 o'clock so you can put forth your doubts or your suggestion you can also suggest sir this should be like that you should like write our answer like that you can also suggest and we are there to endorse it or to modify it we can endorse we can modify so that in that way we can have an interactive section uh, and it will be helpful for you um, surely and for us uh, to save our energy no <laughs> save our energy yes sir <laughs> is not it dr sau so we so from my side because this olvars and nanars 
are two major communities they are there in uh, south india yes so yes just, because uh, just uh, explain those two points as a student they don't have courage to present these questions now uh, i think uh, in this olver and nanar it will come around us uh, they are connected with bhakti movement in the south they yes, will come, uh, it will come to them in the next uh, to or next to next uh, block uh, block fifth fifth i think it will come i will discuss at the time um, but uh, um, just let me uh, please bring uh, to the screen the um, number 10 Unit number ten. okay you see um, in this uh, unit there is no mention of polar nanar i'll tell you this uh, will come around uh, when we shall discuss about 6th and 8th centuries that will be probably in the 6th 6th uh, block anyway uh, i must tell in brief uh, about the alwar and nanar actually nanar were a group of 30 63 cents group of 63 tesotiti cents mane ho chanti gote group ro gote gosthi से मैंने गोटे कह गले गोटे आम कहीपर कौन गोटे स्कूल स्कूल अफ थट एंड देज वेर डिवोटेड टू भक्ति मुमेंट एंड देर भक्ति वाज सेंटर राउंड लॉर्ड शिव एंड एलंग विथ अलवर अलवर वेर देर कंटेम्पोरेज एंड अलवर वेर दि डिट इज अफ दि विष्णु एंड बोथ अलवर एंड नयन आर दे इनफ्लुएंस दि भक्ति मुमेंट in the early medieval period in the south india today also this system alwar and nayanar they exist and they also uh, put for put their bhakti or put their devotion around their respective deities like shiva and vishnu ajimadya shaiva bhakta man ho chanti nayanar ebong vishnu bhakta man ho chanti alwar ebong e mane shiva ko guna gana kari bibhinna prakar prarthana ebong bibhinna prakar gita man likhi chanti e mane vishnu ko गुण गान कर विभिन्न प्रकार भजन कीर्तन आदि करती आज आर्ली मीडियावाल साउथ इंडिया रो एमाने दुईट जाक गोष्ठी भक्ति मुमेंट को आगे नहीं थे जमी आम मीडियावाल समय कबीर नानक वैष्णव सेन्ट्स रामानु सेन्ट्स साउथ रू आ नर्थ को आगे नहीं थे सेमती आर्ली मीडियावाल समय साउथ इंडिया अलवर और नयन आर दुईट जाक संप्रदाय भक्ति मुमेंट को आगे नहीं कह गले साउथ रे दक्षिण रे भक्ति मुमेंट जो अर्ली मीडियावल पीरियड आरंभ होता सही दीटी गोष्ठी पर जो आलुआर और नयन आन विषय ब्लक सिक्स भल भाव डिस्कसन करी एटा खाली मुझे रुडिमेटाली कहीदेली ब्रिफली Uh, for your understanding i shall again discuss it in this Sir, one more question is come from kavita bari hmm. rise of asceticism rise of asceticism hmm. um, now my question will be what do you understand by asceticism ascetic means this shramana culture shramana system shramana philosophy shramana way of life ascetic means those wandering monks without having any permanent address or permanent location for their as their household or any family and they were wandering and homeless and they were the people who believe in work work for a better harmonious society as well as for a better um, thought or to better understanding of the life they were called ascetic and they were not within 
any law or rules formulated by the society or religious group. They don't care for any social masters or religious masters. They were very much sent, they were very much confined within their own philosophy, within their own mind, and within their own freedom. That the assistic system. For example, Buddhist ascetic bhikkhus, they center their philosophy, their um, view around the Buddha and his teaching. So Jain ascetics around Mahavit, Parsonath, and Jain teaching Panchamahabrata. Similarly, Ajivikas, they were also having this uh, Nastikabad, or we can say that uh, um, free will system um, thought and they were centering their thought around this free will so the ascetic system is a system which is based upon free thought and free life carefree life or uh, his question kavita's question was rise of ascetism the rise of ascetism. Yes, sir. Huh. A rise of ascetism in which context you are asking? In the context of Buddhism or in the context of the pre Buddhism, pre Buddhist? You see, before Buddhism also, there was ascetics. Ascetics also were there before Buddha. Because I have told you yesterday, Rishabhnath was the first Jaina Tirthankara. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Rishabhnath was also an ascetic. Aristonami was also a Jainatirthankara. They belong to Rig Vedic age. So, in also a later Vedic period, from 1000 BC to 600 BC, there were so many ascetic. And uh, Buddha also learned that the art of meditation, art of yoga, art of um, um, this uh, Sankhya philosophy from two ascetic, already Kalama and um, Hmm. Another was Rajagriha from Rajagriha, already Kalam from Baishali, and another saint ascetic was from Rajagriha. So Buddha also saw, uh, I think you have heard, you have also gone through the Buddhist uh, um, life of Buddha, and uh, there is a context in the life of Buddha, four great scenes, four great scenes that is called Chatur Mahadrushya, and uh, Buddha denounced the world, renounced the world after viewing this four great sin e charity mahadrushya ko dekhila par buddha tanga guru tyag kartile e charity mahadrushya bitor kon tila gote tila jane vruddha loko jane asustha loko a jane dead body a gote tila sanyasi ascetic so buddha ko purbor modhe ascetism tila so rise of ascetism can be traced back to as far as rigvedic age there were as this is and saints who were wandering like ascetics and living in the jungles, and they have also contributed to the Buddhist literature by writing so many Buddhist, uh, Vedic literature. I'm sorry, they were also they have also contributed to the Vedic literature by writing so many Vedic hymns. They were also ascetics. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Hmm. Any question? Any any question? Any pro, from anything from a chat box? Call of hero worship. Okay, please write your question in the chat box. All this um, um, Alwar Nayanar, rise of ascetism. Can you discuss about the megalithic culture in South India? Yes, I can discuss it. But uh, today I think uh, I cannot uh, do justice by discussing it. Megalithic culture it is a culture which is based upon erecting high stone hinges on the um, graveyards and this is associated with a peculiar or particular cult and uh, different type of tools different types of household materials have been recovered from this um, pits which are definitely which were no doubt graveyards and high stone um, big stones were erected on this graveyard as a mark uh, mark we can say that 
these are these megalisa where memory memorial tombs memorial tombs memorial tombs means smruti stambha ta ko odiyar ka smruti stambha ebong jaha sahit associated hai chi anek amara samajik jibon ebong e samajik jibon la ame bibhinna prakar ro sign pai thau se mane byabhar korta bibhinna jinso jo jinso re ko e smruti stambha ru ko nikotu mili chi jahar aadhar re archaeologist mane south ro ba dakhina दक्षिणांचल भारत दक्षिणांचल गोटे कलचराल लाइफ को डिस्ट्रक्चर कर मेगालीथी कलचर बोली क्या साउथ इंडिया रो मेगालीथी कलचर टुमरो आई कैन वेरी वेल एक्सप्लेन इट इज ऑलरेडी आई थिंक टू आवर्स एंड आई एम बी टायर्ड थैंक यू ओके यू सर विल वाइंड द प्रोग्राम इफ दे डोंट हैव एनी क्वेश्चन so they are also feeling tired also <laughs> i'm also feeling tired actually um, for two hours continuously if we'll just speak and speak um, your yeah, mouth will uh, be if they will have a question naturally you will you will get some time to at least to breathe in <laughs> actually i'll get some respite oh, yes. <laughs> relief this is true it's true sir <laughs> tomorrow i shall definitely yeah, take up this magali yeah. again okay, okay. then uh, we shall continue okay thank you sir, thank you another question sir uh, is left for you sir so yes. generally jo uh, hamara this you will find that jains the jain community jain ha jain you can find in uh, in particularly western india mm -hmm. or some parts of because in uh, generally it is centered around northern india mm -hmm. and uh, why this community is now uh, is particularly can be identified in uh, gujarat and uh, rajasthan so this is from maharashtra also ah there is a it is a background is there sir because this question i uh, uh, i think last year it was put but is, this question is not there in the uh, syllabus and uh, it is it is related with the, the jainism uh, actually so this, uh, uh, this is a left for tomorrow sir this question uh, no, no, okay nothing actually uh, very good question you have uh, actually asked a very good question and very pertinent question and um, it is also a very very good inquiry you, you must as a student and teacher of history you must inquire into this matter and uh, whatever i have gathered this information it was not during the time of mahavir bardhaman bardhaman um, bardhaman mahavir it was much more later after 8th 9th century jainas concentrated in this north western india while buddha buddhist they concentrated concentrated in eastern india do you know in bengal yes, and odisha and yes. jainas they concentrated in western india there must be some sort of paradox because okay. they were coming to east and they were going to west must be some sort of paradox so let's say uh, um, uh, inquire and explore it in tomorrow tomorrow yes. we shall explore very okay. very interesting also it will very interesting very interesting it's a very pertinent question very good thank you Shouldn't well they well, okay good night all good night everybody okay okay good night Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, sir.